Hi friends! Welcome to another lesson with Miss G. I hope you guys finished your paper and if not, I hope you guys are working on it because we are off into a new continent. That's why I want you to finish up so that we're not getting confused and we can start concentrating on our new journey. Okay? So here we go! Super exciting! Where my friends are we off to next? Try to guess at home. I know we learned about different continents already. So we have a few pictures on the side. I want you trying to guess at home. We have a picture of a friend. We have a picture of some penguins. This should probably give you some big hints as to which continent we're going to. It is dun 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 dun. And Antarctica. We are going to be learning all about Antarctica, friends. All the different things you can see there, all the different things you can do, all the different fun animals and the people. But guess what? That's not all we're going to. We have another continent. I want you to try to guess at home. And now, Miss G will give you some hints. Well, this continent has the most precious metals in the world. That means it has the most gold, it has a lot of platinum, it's a very rich country when it comes to all the different materials they have. Let's see what else you can see. So this, my friends, is the biggest statue in the world next to Asia and Europe. So you have the continents of Asia and Europe and they have really big statues and this one's the next one up. It's actually in an airport there. This is probably a nice big hint. It has some of the biggest wildlife in the world. It has, this is the only type of elephant that's there actually. Some elephants don't even live in other continents. So I hope at home you're guessing which one. I'll give you another hint. So this, my friends, is a place called Lagos. And it's the biggest city in the world. It has about 21 million people there. That's how big this city is. Guess what, friends? Do you know which continent we're visiting? We're also visiting? Dun, dun, dun! Africa! So this is going to be really exciting over the next few days. And I want you at home, like we always do when we introduce a new text, what do I notice and wonder about Antarctica and Africa, right? So that's what we're thinking about today's lesson and always we're going to be thinking about what interesting natural features can people see in Africa and Antarctica. So looking at these two covers, friends, I want you to think about, do they look familiar to you? Does it look like something we know? They look like the books we read about Europe and Asia. Right. They look just like it, just different continents. I think they have the same author as the other continent books. Ding, 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 you're absolutely right. So these two different books are from the same author and they look really similar. And we are off, friends. We are first stopping at Antarctica. Antarctica is at the bottom of our world map. Um, and let's start the story. So, welcome to Antarctica. Antarctica is an icy continent. It has no countries. The largest pieces of land on Earth are continents. There are seven. Antarctica is the yellow continent on this map. Just like I showed you before, it's at the bottom. People of Antarctica. Few people live in Antarctica. Most are scientists who come to study the continent. Visitors also come to watch seals and other amazing animals. So again, friends, remember you're noticing things in our story and starting to think of what questions you have. Adventurers ski in Antarctica. Some ski to the South Pole. It is one of the coldest places on Earth. Amazing animals. Antarctica is famous for its penguins. Rock hoppers live by the rocky shore. Killer whales swim in the icy water. They hunt for fish to eat. 
ice, wind, and snow. Antarctica has fierce winds that blow the snow. People must wear bright coats to see each other. It gets so windy and so foggy you can't even see the friend next to you. So they have to wear really bright coats to look. Antarctica has tall mountains. Most are covered by ice and snow. Antarctica has thick sheets of ice. Giant ice chunks can break off into the ocean. These chunks are called icebergs. Learning from Antarctica. Scientists come to Antarctica from many countries. They study the ice to learn about climate changes. Climate is just another way of saying like the weather, the different things happening on our earth that change the wind and the snow and the rain and the sun. Scientists study the animals and weather too. There is so much to learn from Antarctica. Countries will always work together to protect this icy continent. Modern Marvels. Scientists in Antarctica work at Princess Elizabeth Station. The stainless steel walls have many layers to keep heat in and to keep the cold winds out. Windmills on tall poles catch the wind to make electricity for the station. So there's all different ways to make electricity, friends. This is one way by using wind. Sometimes we use water and different things like that. This reminds me of something from Star Wars. <laughs> Meet a wandering albatross. Wandering albatrosses lay their eggs on islands around Antarctica. The male and female work together to raise their young. They have the longest wind span of any bird. They fly far looking for squid and fish to eat. And words you know or may know, iceberg, killer whale, penguin, and plane. So are there a lot of people in Antarctica? Do many people live there? And tell me why you think that at home, I hope you're answering. I'll ask my friends in this class. No, because it's so cold. Yes, in our book, they told us that a lot of people can't live there because it's so cold. No, because it's made of ice. Right, if it's only ice and snow all around, it's really hard to live in a place like that. So now, friends, let's do our wonder wheel. Our first one is how. Who can give me a how question at home? I'm gonna ask my friends here. How do people in Antarctica get food? That's a good question because it's covered in snow, right? Well, they get it delivered, but I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more. Let's see who else can answer a question. Why? Why is Antarctica so cold? So they told us in our text that it was cold, but they didn't really give us the why. So Ms. G's gonna look that up now. But I want to ask one more question. When? So at home, give me a when question for Antarctica. I'll ask my friends here. When did people start exploring Antarctica? Awesome. So all these questions are great. But guess what, friends? They weren't in our text. So Miss G had to go searching for them. How do people in Antarctica get food? Most people in Antarctica are on national basis. They said that in our book that they are, are mostly scientists there. They eat food that is shipped in there in from their own country and also brought at ports en route. So basically friends, since there's no grass, right? You can see there's no grass, there's no trees. It's hard for them to actually live and plant and buy things, right? So what they have to do is say, um, a different country, please send that over to us so that we can eat. So some popular things in Alaska to eat are this type of bread here, this type of like meat jam kind of thing, meat spread. And they're actually known for their chocolate, which is kind of surprising. I guess once they get their stuff inside, a lot of people like making chocolate and they're known to make this type of chocolate. When did people start exploring Antarctica? 1820. So friends, we live in the year 2020. That means this was 
hundred years ago, a very long time ago. What do we call these types of boats? Are they vacation boats? No, right? They're explorer boats. So a Russian man got on his explorer boat. His name was Fabian. And he was the first person to see Antarctica. Then as we kept going, more people discovered it. So my last question from my friends was, why is Antarctica so cold? Both the Arctic Poles, nor Antarctica and uh, the North Pole, are cold because they don't get direct sunlight. The sun is always low on the horizon, even in the middle of summer. In winter, the sun is so far below the horizon that it doesn't come up at all for months at a time. So even though it looks like it's a little closer to the sun, friends, it is so far the way the earth is, rotates and looks at the sun, it's so far from it that it never gets warm. The South Pole never gets warm. Different things are happening to make it much warmer than um, it's used to, but it's supposed to be very cold there because it never gets close to the sun, okay? So looking at our uh, map here, we are now in Antarctica, right? What do you notice about Africa, the next continent we're going to? They're pretty close, right? They're basically neighbors. So if we want to fly there from Antarctica to Africa using our handy dandy compass, what direction will we go in? Will we go west or east or north or south? At home, I want you to answer out loud. And dun, 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 we would fly north, right? We will go up so that we can go from Antarctica to Africa, our next continent that we are learning about. So Africa, just like Antarctica, is by Rebecca Hirsch, the same author, the person who wrote the words. Welcome to Africa. Africa is a continent. It has more than 50 countries. The largest pieces of land on earth are called continents. There are seven. Africa is the yellow continent on this map. People of Africa. Many people live in Africa. Some live in cities. Cairo is Africa's largest city. It is in Egypt. These children go to school near there. Some Africans work on farms. They grow corn, rice, and other crops. Children play soccer in the villages and cities and on the beach. Soccer is the most popular sport in Africa. Actually, friends, the soccer, the one where you kick the ball with your feet, is one of the most popular sports in the whole entire world. If you were to go to any other continent, they will probably love soccer. Wild places. Africa has deserts. The Sahara is the world's largest desert. It is very hot and dry. So remember friends, as we're going through a new book, I want you to think about your wonders and I want you to remember, what's that wonder in our story? Africa has grassy places called savannas. Savannas have wet seasons and dry seasons. There are rainforests in Africa. It rains almost every day in the forest. Many kinds of plants grow there. Ooh. Amazing animals. Africa is famous for its wild animals. Gorillas live in the forest. Zebras, giraffes, and lions live in the savanna. Water and land. The Nile River in Africa is the world's longest river. People live near rivers so they can get water. I know friends, my book is ripped. What can I do? All right, I had to take the picture. This is the only book I had. So bear with me friends, you're going to be seeing this rip for quite a while. Kilimanjaro is Africa's tallest mountain. People climb this mountain. They visit Africa to see its amazing animals, people, and places. Modern Marvels. 
The Library of Alexandria in Africa is a very modern building. It has both sharp angles and smooth curves. Columns hold up the parts of the building. The Library of Alexandria can hold millions of books. It also has art galleries and museums. Can you imagine that, friends, going to a library and in the library that's so big it has its own museum in it? That's amazing. Meet a meerkat. Meerkats live together in family groups. Meerkat families work together to gather food and raise their young. You can find meerkats on African savannas. Words you know, we have a desert, gorilla, mountain, and savanna. So, we're back to our wonders, friends. And remember, we're checking out, was this in the book? We're on how. How big is the biggest desert? Was, it at, was that in our story? Mm, I don't know. I want a thumbs up at home or a thumbs down. Let's move on to our next wonder. What? What is a savanna? Give me a thumbs up at home if you remember if it was in our story or a thumbs down. No, I don't remember that being in the story. Last question, where? Where do zebras live in Africa? Good question. Now, friends, do you remember? Thumbs up? Yeah, they answered that in the story. Thumbs down. No, that wasn't in the story. Well, let's see. Where do zebras live in Africa? Dun, dun, dun. It was in our story. Zebras, giraffes, and lions live in the savanna. That's where they live. That's the answer to our wonder. What is a savanna? That was another question of ours. Africa has grassy places called savannas. Savannas have wet seasons and dry seasons. So both these wonders were answered in our question. How big is the biggest desert? So this, my friends, was not in our story. And Ms. G found a little video to help us out. The Sahara Desert, the largest subtropical desert in the world. Where is the Sahara Desert? The Sahara Desert is located in northern Africa. How big is the Sahara Desert? The Sahara Desert is approximately 3.3 million square miles, or 25% of the entire continent of Africa. To put this in perspective, this is almost the size of the United States of America, which is approximately 3.7 million square miles. Okay, did you hear that, friends? The size of the Sahara, the biggest desert, is almost as big as our entire United States. That is amazing. So, Ms. G found, um, now that we know that it's the biggest uh, desert, a family who actually visited and it's really cool because they took a lot of pictures so you can see the two daughters were on their way walking in the sahara right and she goes into this is the mommy who did it this is one of the little girls wearing one of the um people what people will wear in sahara so as you can see it's really cool there's rugs there's different things there um, so this was like a house in the Sahara too and you can see it looks a little different from us but they still have some things we have like an AC. Here's some of the food they had in while they were traveling the Sahara. Here it says breakfast included Moroccan crepes, fried eggs, hard-boiled eggs, bread, cheese, butter, and jam. All of that sounds extremely yummy <laughs> so we have here um, some rocks they're not exactly in the Sahara they're close to it and this is a village that was there so they were watching this woman work and you can see that she was probably doing the rugs behind her or the carpets and that's what they do by hand so now you can see 
that they were in a tent. So when you go to the Sahara and you visit it, you can either stay in a village or a city nearby, or you can actually stay in the Sahara um, in a tent that's there. And so the mommy ended up doing a little video showing the kids walking or <laughs> showing her walking in it. So of course there's advertisement friends, sorry about that. But um, here you go. So here she is walking in to the tent in the Sahara Desert where you can go and visit. And you can see they're sitting outside her family. You can see all the different beds they have there. Um, there's also, you can see here, a little AC to make sure they're staying warm or cold. So sometimes ACs could do both things. They even have a sink. They have a toilet and they have a shower. So even though it's in the desert, friends, since we do live in modern times, um, they discovered different things we could do there. Um, I, what I mean is that since it's modern, you can have a toilet now, you can have um, a shower and all those different types of things. This is some of the more food they had there. This is like the breakfast they would have, a buffet style. And this is the lunch they had, lots of veggies. It looks really good. And this is the family sitting in the desert. So even though it's in the desert, friends, look at how they have their carpets ready. And you can see the different tents. So this is when the sun was going down in the Sahara. And when you go to the Sahara, you can actually ride on a camel. This is the family jumping for joy in the Sahara. And you can also, instead of snowboarding, go sandboarding. That looks super fun. How many of my friends will want to do sandboarding if they went to visit? Then there's also something called ATVs. It's these type of vehicles. And Miss G would love to do this. So this is the mommy and daddy on the different ATVs exploring the Sahara Desert. And there's the family sitting down. So even though it's a desert, friends, you can actually still go visit it. So before we end our lesson, let's do some shout outs. Our first shout out is Nicholas and he wrote, my favorite thing to do after school is eat ice cream. Is eating, I think he was trying to say his ice cream. Let me tell you, Nicholas, you did an excellent job. And why does Ms. G say that? Because you have an amazing amount of detail here. You have lots of details. And guess what? You have more labels than three. And that really impresses Ms. G. You have school, Franco, mommy, me, son, truck, ice cream wow nicholas excellent job keep up the good work buddy next up we have jace and jace wrote my favorite thing to do after school is play with my sister jace wrote himself and the ball and zuri his sister excellent job jace i like that you had your three labels like miss g asked your name and date and everything miss g asked as your opinion now also notice that Jace is trying his best to follow the lines. Good job, Jace. Make sure that if you're still in the same sentence, everything is lowercase, but excellent job, Jace. Now, last up, we have Ari. Ari wrote, my favorite thing to do after school is watch a movie and eat popcorn. And here she is, Ari, eating the popcorn on her bed, watching TV. Excellent job, Ari. You did even four labels instead of three. You have your period at the end because it's the end of your sex sentence. Excellent job. All right, friends, we're done for today. You guys do such a great job. I'm very proud.